I hated sports as a kid. I was awkward and scared and scrawny. I think the thing I hated most about it is that if you messed up, you immediately had a teacher, classmate, or neighborhood kid yelling something at you. So here I am, running around, trying to remember the stupid rules, like what it means that I'm on Ronnie, where down court is, or why I'm supposed to stop sitting in the field and picking out the grass. And I just have voices all around me telling me what I'm doing wrong, and that I'm an idiot, and and it was just awful. You see, I was an artsy kid. I liked drawing and painting, writing little plays and poetry, and making stupid movies with my family's camcorder. The thing about being an artsy kid is that you get to do it on your own and figure out what you like. Sure, a lot or most of what I made was bad, but I got better by art teachers helping me and guiding me or noticing what people responded to and improving on my skills from there. It's not that I didn't like following rules, or at least wasn't willing to follow rules. You see, I was a church kid. Being a church kid is all about following rules and avoiding this evil thing called sin at all costs. I've since developed a a less than positive view of what believing in sin can do to a person and and to society. Wait, Trevor, you aren't about to tell us that there's something wrong with telling people not to sin. What could possibly be bad about people avoiding doing bad stuff? Ugh, yeah, sorry. Before we go any further, I want to let you know that this episode is a bit of a doozy. I do talk about sexual assault, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, and spiritual abuse. So if you need to skip this one or watch it on a day when you're in a better headspace, believe me, I get it. I'm also going to criticize the Bible a bit. So you've been warned if that bothers you as well. What exactly is sin anyway? Let's find out what YouTube says, preferably using a whiteboard or simple animation. The word sin appears almost 400 times in the Bible. What is sin exactly? The simplest answer is that sin is disobedience to God. Sin can be thought of as committing a spiritual crime. A simple definition of sin is doing things our own way instead of God's way. It's trusting and acting on our own opinions or feelings instead of trusting God and acting on His truth. Sin equals death. So does that mean if we sin, God is going to strike us with lightning and fry us to a crisp? Or does that mean we fall over dead right when we sin? Not exactly. When we say death, we're not necessarily talking about our bodies dying. We're talking about our spirits dying and being separated from God. Well, on page one of the Bible, we learn that every human is an image of God, a sacred being who represents the Creator and is worthy of respect. And so in this way of seeing the world, sin is a failure to love God and others by not treating them with the honor they deserve. The theology basically boils down to this. Eve ate the forbidden fruit, convinced Adam to do the same, and now we have the ability to sin, or original sin. Basically, they sinned, and now we sin. Mm -hmm. See that talon coming down from the sky? That's God. Look how freaked out they are. But it gets a little... Jesus Christ came to fulfill the law of Moses and to establish the new covenant between God and his people. The old covenant was written in stone, but the new covenant is written on our hearts. Entering the new covenant is made possible only by faith in Christ who paid the price with his blood. Some people would say that only rules specifically canceled in the New Testament don't count anymore. Some would say that only ones that aren't repeated in the New Testament are canceled, while others will consider even... Even some New Testament rules, a product of their time that don't apply anymore. So I'm going to give you the three C's of biblical interpretation. We're going to look at the context, we're going to look at the culture, and then we're going to look at some cross references. And then I'm going to finish this video by asking the question, what does this mean for us in the church today? So we have to figure out what is or isn't a sin. Here's the question. Is it a sin to use marijuana if it's not against the law. Wet dreams, sexual dreams, are they sinful? Is it a sin for Christians to gamble their money away? Is it a sin to want? The 23rd Psalm says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. (laughs) Is it a sin to date a non-Christian? Well, it's not a sin to eat a lawnmower, it's just not a good idea. Is it a sin to do yoga? Is it wrong or a sin 
to listen to secular music as Christians. Is it a sin to swear, to cuss, to use vulgar words? If she's sinning by wearing pants. Is it okay for Christians to watch horror movies? Oh. Is it sinful or selfish to pursue happiness? And the Dude. question is, is it wrong for Christians to drink alcohol? What Question, masturbation, is it a sin according to the Bible? For this episode, we will be dealing with the question, is it a sin to take out insurance? And in fact, the Bible tells us that if a woman has short hair, God says that's just as bad as if you were bald. Is it permitted or prohibited for Christians to get tattoos? Should Christians kiss before marriage? And how far is too far to go when dating? But at least we all agree that you start with the Ten Commandments, right? So, Mr. Nice Guy, have you kept the Ten Commandments? Pretty much. Do you mind if we take a look at them and maybe see how nice you really are? Uh, okay. Great. Here's one. You shall not lie. Mr. Nice Guy, have you ever told a lie? Well, yeah. Who hasn't? What do you call somebody who tells lies? A liar. Actually, the commandment is you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor, which could be understood as not lying, but also could just mean don't do perjury. So try not to lie about the Ten Commandments, especially the lying one. A liar. I mean, most of it is just God being jealous, and one is uh, telling you not to be jealous. No document in world history so changed the world for the better, as did the Ten Commandments. Western civilization, the civilization that developed universal human rights, created women's equality, ha ha, ha 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 ha, ended slavery, ah ha ha, yeah, 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 ha ha created parliamentary democracy, among other unique achievements, would not have developed without them. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. I love when people say that it's the basis for modern civilization. Only two of the ten are laws in most countries. Well, I guess three if you count perjury. And I think we would have figured out that allowing murdering and stealing is probably not a good idea for a functioning society. Lord Jehovah has given unto you these 15. Oi. 10, 10 commandments for all to obey. It also doesn't mention sexual assault or slavery. In fact, the Bible treats rape as property crime against the woman's father and tells you that you can beat your slave just hard enough that they don't die within a few days. Basically, I'm saying that people are pretty much on their own to figure out what is a sin or isn't, but that doesn't stop people from acting like everything is black and white and we've figured it all this out. It's not a gray area. Dad, it's all a gray area. The Bible is black and white. For some, that simply means it's a sin not to show people love at all costs. For others, it means that they personally avoid things that they view as sinful. The same philosophy that says, if you're on a diet, it means you don't eat that junk food. It doesn't mean that you run around knocking junk food at a part. Since you have chosen that path, we will not support you any longer. You will need to move out and find wherever you can to live and do what you want to because I will not let people believe that I condone what you do. Don't kill the messenger, the Bible says. And Sodom and Megora, he destroyed Sodom and Megora because of hom homosexuality and the lesbians and all that stuff going on. It can cause injury or pain in some cases. Authorities point to Philadelphia's first century gospel church where the Shibles belong, a church that declares its trust in God alone for physical healing. This church lists many of its core philosophies on its website. Relevant to this case is one particular belief that I will quote in part. If we are trusting in pill prescription or medication, Satan is able to hinder our victory from God. But for others, for far too many, it's about controlling other people. Their view of what they think is sinful will make them fight against other people's basic rights. It's in the Bible and God says so. It's between a man and a woman. And the Supreme Court has no authority to even redefine it, even talk about it. It's not in their authority at all. People like us who are offended by this sort of thing, we don't hate homosexuals. No, we don't hate homosexuals. We're just angry at the ones who turn us on. What? 
for some, it means shaming others for their perceived sin. Good destruction, I like it. It's a good destruction? Uh, How about everlasting destruction? Is that good? Yeah, that's pretty good. I like it. Well, you say that now, but I'm going to call you on your verbal hypocrisy because you're on your way to hell currently in your sins. And if you really think it's so fun, you should start the party now. But you won't do that. Yeah, sinners high-five themselves straight to hell. I don't need no evil weed. Oh, man. Keep wow. your crack and your LSD. I'm snorting something that God gave me, and it smells a lot like blood. Another issue is that the doctrine of sin, especially the aspect of Eve eating the apple, has allowed for centuries of sexism. This reporter, he said, um, I heard that you... Um, you wouldn't, that it'd be a cold day in hell before you get your theology from a woman. He says, don't you kind of think that's demeaning to the genders? I says, ask Adam what he thought about getting his theology from a woman. I said, it damned the whole world. I says, the reason your soul, sorry, soul's going to hell is because a woman told Adam what God thinks about things. God assigns different roles to men and women. This is a result of the way mankind was created and the way in which sin entered the world. God, through the Apostle Paul, restricts women from serving in roles of leadership and or having spiritual authority over men. This precludes women from serving as pastors over men, which definitely includes preaching to them, teaching them publicly, and exercising spiritual authority over them. Very conservative. Very long, very high necked dresses. Your knees need to be covered at all times. How strict are we talking about here? We weren't allowed to hold hands with a boy. You couldn't go to the movies. We were not allowed to have any rock beat in our music. Men are in charge. It was ingrained in our head. We don't question. Women are in a subordinate role. Whatever happened to the days when girls said, I'm not going to be touched by every guy. I'm not going to walk down the aisle like a filthy dishrag on my wedding day. The theology of sin is also the theology of guilt. It tells people they are awful and terrible people, and the only way they can be fixed is with Christ, and far too often, by default, through them or their church. Because of this, it has empowered far too many pastors and church leaders to control and manipulate people in their congregation. After Leaf was sent to prison a second time for sexually molesting another minor, did she have the courage to confide in her pastor, Chuck Phelps? I was told by Pastor Phelps that a good Christian forgives and forgets and moves on with their life and doesn't press charges. Your pastor told you you should forgive and forget? Yes. He made me go to the prison to grant Daniel forgiveness. Some leaders will remind you that not forgiving someone is a sin. So even if you are the one who was hurt, they've now added guilt to the shame and pain you already have. At age 14, Tina began babysitting for an IFB church family, Ernie and Tammy Willis, often spending the night. And she says, confiding in them that her stepfather had molested her. Did you feel safe with them? Yes. But in 1997, when Tina was 15, she says that illusion of safety was shattered when Ernie Willis volunteered to give her driving lessons. And he pulled me in the back seat and, and raped me. And again, Tina says she remembered Pastor Phelps' instructions to forgive and forget. She told no one, not her mother, not her pastor, not the police. In fact, I didn't even tell anybody until I found out I was four months pregnant. This church on a cold Sunday evening 13 years ago, a frightened young girl says she was forced to stand before the congregation. She was up there all by herself in front of hundreds of people. I was sobbing. Like a scene from the Salem witch trial, she says she was forced to confess a sin. There was just dread and fear. A sin so terrible, she says she was banished, sent away from her church and her home in disgrace. But I believed that it was my, my fault. When this power is wielded by awful people, it can make the victim feel like the guilty party and absolve the people who are in the wrong. Just look at the reaction when it was revealed that the pastor at a mega church had groomed and had sex with a 16-year-old girl he was meant to be counseling. You know, we're all sinners, and John and Romans 3.10 says, as written, there's none righteous, no, not one. So we're all sinners, too. You can't leave that out. I'm here to support this pastor of the church, and, you know, you can never judge the book by its cover. Uh, people can say different statements and different stories about this man. By the way, that pastor 
was this guy. Your soul, sorry soul's going to hell is because a woman told Adam what God thinks about things. The main problem is that it removes empathy from the equation. Jesus himself said, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Which is the way it should be, right? But instead it becomes a point system of who's right and who's wrong. Every sandwich you ate, every time you bought a magazine, every single thing you did had an effect that rippled out over time and ultimately created some amount of good or bad. And it gives people permission and justification to look down on people and treat them the way they don't deserve to be treated. If we really governed how we acted based on empathy and treating people how we want to be treated, we'd ask ourselves, how would I feel if someone tried to stop me from getting married to the person I love? This is the church at the center of the controversy, Gulnair Free Will Baptist Church in Pike County. It recently passed a proposal saying it would not allow interracial couples to become members of the church. They had set the date, printed up, and mailed out all the invitations, but the day before wedding bells were to ring for Charles and Tiandria, they say they got some bad news from the pastor. Congregation had decided that no black couple could be married at their church. That's why we don't do gay weddings or mixed race. Okay, so because why not? Because of our Christian race. I mean, our Christian belief. Okay, we're Christians as well. So yes, what, what in the Bible tells you that? Well, I don't want to argue my faith. No, that's fine. Just, yeah, we just, we just don't participate. Bakersfield's Tastries Bakery denied a lesbian couple's request for a wedding cake, even though this, this, by the way, is one of the cakes on the bakery's Yelp page. This is a real cake they made. It, which is easily the gayest cake I've ever seen in my life. Going to the bathroom. Well, a big deadline is coming up in California's co-ed bathroom battle. A law there lets transgender students use any public school bathrooms or locker rooms they choose. As David Brody tells us, churches are fighting this access and pleading for help. Look at them. I'm using the bathroom right now, and they just violated me. Getting a job. And he said, well, uh, did you conceive prior to marriage? And I answered, and I told him, yes, it was really, it came out of nowhere. Um, you were shocked that he I asked was, the question, you said. I was absolutely shocked. I didn't, it came out of nowhere. I didn't know, I didn't think or know to, to you know, I was honest about it. And when you I didn't know it would cost, my, cost me my job. Getting needed medication. She called it in for the same day pickup. But this time, the pharmacist told her he wouldn't do it and it would be ready the next day. And he just said, because of my religious beliefs. And your reaction? Um, I was really speechless for a moment. And I responded with, so your religious beliefs compromise my health care? And I hung up. Kessner soon angry. called the New Mexico ACLU, who sent a letter to Walgreens saying, denying her birth control is sex discrimination. A man can walk into the store and buy condoms without question, but Kessner couldn't. Or saying goodbye to a loved one. He says the church was given a copy of Vanessa Collins, uh, Collier's memorial video, the tribute video, which showed her kissing her wife two days before the funeral was to take place but they didn't actually review the video until just minutes before the memorial service was supposed to start. Now, family and friends attending today's protest say the pastor asked the family to edit the video and remove the same-sex kissing shots. The family declined. They say they were then asked to move the service. Some people are like the sports kids and feel more comfortable knowing that they have specific rules they need to follow, which I get. But it also means they know what it means to be part of a team. And that's what we are here on Earth. We're one big team, and we need to start treating people like they're part of our team. And some people are like the Archie kids, and just enjoy trying to figure out what it's all about. Yeah, like Pastor Roy said, our God's so much bigger and wiser than us, and trying to see what he's thinking would be like an ant trying to see what I'm thinking. Yes, exactly. But we can trust in his wisdom, and we can have faith that he is watching over us. Like me with the anthill in my backyard. I spent days watching the ants, trying to figure out which ones were good and which ones were bad. But they all just looked like ants. So I started smiting all of them. Well, that's not... I was smiting them with the garden hose and with lighter fluid and with the lawnmower. And to be perfectly honest, I think I went a little crazy with the shovel. Those ants could have been praying to me all day. I wouldn't have heard them. There was nothing they could do about it. But I, I don't think... And really, it's the same with us. There's nothing we can do about anything either. So why worry about it? Hey, this is making me feel better. Oh, <laughs> that's good. But I guess all we can do is live our lives with as much kindness and decency as possible. 
and try not to dwell on God standing over us with that giant shovel. Bye! Strive to be good to people. Strive to love people. Strive to understand things from their perspective. Also, be healthy. Be safe. And allow yourself to have some fun once in a while. Also, I've said this before, but spiritual abuse is real and can have long-lasting effects. Please seek counseling if you've been hurt by a church or religious leaders or, or anyone. I assure you, it isn't a sin. Thank you for making it this far. Please share with someone you think it'll help. And if you feel inclined, hit that subscribe button. Thanks all. Love you. Amazing race, how sweet the taste that saved a wrench for me. I once was in the lost and found, was blind but found my keys. Work, 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 Sky Moon. <laughs> Another issue is that the doctrine of spin, spin, doctrine of spin. Ew.